there is one other situation or one other aspect that we may want to add to our game. What if our score gets above, let's say, 10,000 or 20,000 or something like that? Do we want to give extra lives or extra game lives to the player? And so to do that, this would be a good place right after this switch to say, since we just did the scoring and we just added points, let's say call a function maybe like check bonus. So if we had a function like check bonus, then it could check to see if we were in a bonus situation and maybe we need an extra life or something like that. So I'm going to put in here check bonus and then down at the bottom here I'm going to make a function called check bonus. Alright, now for this function to work what we're going to want to do is check to see if we've hit certain milestones. And for those milestones I'm going to go up here to the top of my code and right under these variables at the top of our code I'm going to paste some new variables. All right, and I just pasted those in from another game because it was quicker. So you can see here though, but let's look at them. So you'll have to write them out. var 10k, all capitals, 10k, that's for 10,000. var 20k, 30k, 40k, and 50k. So this is going to, these variables will signify you've reached 10,000 points, 20,000, 30,000, 40, and 50,000. Notice the colon afterwards and then I set this variable to be a boolean, you have to put a capital B, and then I set it equal to false. So right now we do not have 10k, that's false. We do not have 20k, it's a boolean, that's also false. So all these situations are false. Now in the bottom of our code, once this check bonus function is run, what we can do is we can say if, and we'll do an if conditional test here. We'll say if score is greater than or equal to, we'll say 10,000, double and sign and 10k equal equals false. So there's two conditions in there. Has our score reached 10,000? right I can put those in between parentheses here and then separated by the double and sign so there's two conditions and 10k equal equals false I'll have to put another there so this is between parentheses and this is between parentheses and then the whole thing is between parentheses so if this is the case then lives plus plus our lives go up by one notice we have a variable at the top that says that tracks our lives so our lives go up by one and if our lives have gone up by one then we also need to go to our movie clip on our stage here which is MC lives and say MC lives dot go to and stop lives. Once we've done that, we want to take our variable that we've changed, 10k, and set it equal to true. Otherwise, we could have a situation where this keeps happening over and over again. So once we've done this, we want to, because the check bonus function is being called within a function that's running so quickly so many times per second that you run the risk of this thing getting called too many times and then getting not just one extra life but getting five or six extra lives because it's being called so quickly so we make our conditional test dependent upon this variable which is going to act like a flag and then we have to of course turn it off by changing this boolean variable from false to true what we can do is take this whole thing and change it to an else and then paste it else if the score is greater than 20,000 and then say 20k equal equals false lives plus plus take our movie clip and go to lives and then change 
20k equal to true. And we do the same thing for each one of our variables for all the extra men that we want to have. So this check bonus function will move the MC Lives movie clip to whatever we've incremented the lives variable to. And once again, just to show it, if we go into that MC Lives movie clip, if lives equals, let's say, five, then we will go all the way up to the fifth keyframe. And you can see at the fifth keyframe, we have five lives or five game lives. So if we have three men to start with and we get to 10,000, then we'll move the lives variable up to four. We'll jump here and we get an extra man. So there it is. So now the last thing to do is to create a start keyframe, a game on keyframe, and a game over keyframe. So to do this, what I'll do is I'll highlight this top layer here. I'm going to rename the layer to Actions. And then layer two here, I'll double click here and rename this to Graphics. That's where our graphics go. This is our Actions layer. This is our Graphics layer. I'll make another layer and call this layer labels. So let's lay out some frame labels. So what I'll do is this first keyframe, I'll put a label here that says intro. And then on frame 10, F6 on the keyboard to put a keyframe. And I'll make this frame label game on. With the keyframe selected, if you go into the properties window, you can have the label access here in the properties window so that you can put a frame label. And then on frame 20, I'll also do an F6 on the keyboard to insert a keyframe, and this will be game over. So now I hit enter, and I'll put an extra frame here on 30. I'll right click insert frame. So now I have an intro, game on, and game over keyframes. For the graphics, I don't mind if the graphics stay on screen the whole time. So what I'll do is I'll just go down here and hit F5. So now the graphics will be visible all the way through. But the game code that's right there on that action script layer, I'm going to move that over to the game on keyframe. And I'll open it up. And it needs to make sure I need to make sure that it has a stop action at the top. And you can see it does. So stop action is necessary. Then on the intro keyframe, I'll put a stop action. And I'll put the code for a button right now. So I'll say start BTN. So start BTN, that'll be a button, dot on press equals a function. And I'll say go to, and then in between quotation marks, game on. So there is the code for a button called start BTN. And maybe I'll make the B capital here. So all I need now is a button named start BTN with a capital B and I'm ready to go. So for that, all we need to do is just get the text tool and make sure I'm on the graphics layer. Just say start, and that's the button right here. Start game. Of course, this text needs to be static text, not dynamic text, so I'll change that. And once we have our text there, We'll need to convert it to a button, so we highlight it, modify, convert to symbol, change it from a movie clip to a button. I'll call it btn-start, and I'm going to give it, um, I'll click OK, and then with it selected, I will give it the instance name, start, capital B, btn. So there's our button. Now we don't want this start button to be there on the game on screen. So on the game on screen, I will put a keyframe F6 and then delete the start button. So the start button is only visible on the intro screen, but this should work. So now if I hit control enter and I click start game, the game starts and we're ready to play. When the game is over, it should jump us to the game over keyframe. On the game over keyframe, I'm also going to need to F6 and make sure that there's a stop action. And then I'll also need to create a button for going back to the game on screen 